So uh, welcome to video problem 12. Uh, the objective here is to get the B field uh, due to a uniform uh, steady surface current density residing in free space. We are going to use Ampere slope uh, for this purpose. So this is uh, our uh, surface uh, current uh, configuration. We have introduced a rectangular coordinate system so that the surface current uh, resides in xy plane. It has uh, this direction uh, along uh, x unit vector and it has a constant magnitude gs, js. It's located in the free space uh, uh, host medium uh, with this uh, free space permeability. The objective is uh, to get the field in the upper half space at this observation point and also in the lower half space at this observation point down here. We have already introduced this uh, rectangular XYZ coordinate system, so the observation point will have these coordinates. Alternatively, you can uh, pick up the observation point through this position vector. We postulate uh, that the B field uh, will only have a Y component and this Y component uh, will be constant, uh, which means independent of uh, X, Y, Z coordinates. In the upper half space, it will point uh, in the negative Y direction and in the lower half space, it will point uh, in the positive uh, Y direction. So we would have to argue uh, why this uh, must be the case for our presently considered surface current. Obviously, because uh, the current is infinite and uniform in x and y directions, the field will be independent of x and y coordinates. We also know that the divergence of the B field is always equal to zero. When the B field is not a function of x and y, the divergence will be given by the expression here. Obviously, this can only be zero if the B field is not a function of Z either. So the magnitude of the B field is indeed constant in both half spaces. Now we fix our attention to the direction of the B field, which means we have to figure out the components of the B field. To this end, we can uh, decompose our surface current density uh, into these infinitely many line currents which are uh, located in xy plane and will be uh, having current uh, flowing in x direction. We know uh, what the fields uh, by these individual line currents are. We have treated this in video problem 11. In particular, focus the attention uh, on this uh, line current that you can see here and also uh, the other one that you can see there. And let's look at the fields at these two uh, observation points which are symmetrically located uh, with respect to these uh, two specific line currents. Obviously, the field due to this uh, line current, the green one, will point in this direction. It has only a phi component and down here it will point in that direction. The field due to the other current will point downwards uh, here and uh, also uh, downwards at this particular observation point. Now, when you superimpose the two, obviously you get a field which is along negative y direction here and along positive y direction down here. So we have shown that the B field only has a Y component and this Y component is independent of coordinates. That means that we can use Ampere slope uh, that you can see here. Uh, C is a closed loop along which you have to evaluate the circulation of the B field. That will be, in this case, uh, this rectangular path 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Uh, and you will have to relate this circulation to this product of free space permeability and the total current flowing through the surface bounded by this contour. The L element in general is given by the expression here, but since the B field uh, only has a Y component, you will not have any contribution to the circulation for this path and also for that path because B and the L elements on this path are orthogonal. So we may conveniently use the DL uh, expression that you can see down here. So now we have, uh, now we have uh, all the ingredients uh, to use. 
and uh, the left hand side is actually just an integral from 2 to 3 and then 4 to 1 this is what you can see down here and that's related to this right hand side these two integrals will give 2 times the magnitude of the B field times the length of the individual integration parts and then the total current is obviously the current which is crossing uh, this blue uh, path down here and that's essentially the line integral of our uh, surface current density which will be given uh, by the result here. If you equate the left and right hand sides of your ampere slope you easily see that the B field in the upper half space will be given by the expression here and in the lower half space it will uh, be given uh, by the expression here. So now we have essentially solved our problem. This is the final expression. Uh, use this final expression to verify the fundamental postulates on the differential form uh, at points away from the surface current. Also, get the corresponding magnetic field intensities, which are the H fields, and use them to double check whether the boundary conditions for the H fields are satisfied at the surface current location. So thank you very much for your attention.